Okay, let's talk about the number one thing you must know on all math tests. Okay, so um, uh, again, uh, with my videos, I, I definitely always try to get uh, students to focus on things that they might not be focusing enough on. And I think this is one of these things that we're going to get into in this video that uh, I really want to emphasize for anyone out there who's got to take um, a math test, whether that be the GED, the SAT, the ACT, and the Algebra 2 uh, final, whatever. This is going to apply across the board. Uh, before we get going, if you're new to my channel um, and you enjoy my teaching style, I hope you consider becoming a subscriber. I literally have hundreds of math videos and doing videos every week. So if you subscribe, um, make sure you hit that bell notification. Um, as well, I offer uh, full comprehensive uh, math courses. I'll leave a description and a link to those in uh, the description of this video. But with that being said, let's get into this. All right, so I always like to challenge uh, uh, people out there. And, you know, you might want to pause the video, maybe think about what do you think is the number one thing that you need to know going into any math test? So let's kind of just draw a little stick figure guy here. So, now, the obvious things, okay, is you want to know the topic, right? You want to know, like, what was taught in class, right? This is, this is like, you know, basic common sense stuff, you know? You might need to know formulas um, on any particular math test. So, this is all, like, the obvious, right? Okay, so this is not what I'm getting at. So I'm assuming that you, the the person out there, is already going to be, um, you know, uh, basically be uh, doing these things to get ready for a math test. Now, what is the main thing that I see that students don't prepare on because they're not thinking enough about it? And this is it. This is the number one thing you must know on all math tests is what is the game plan? What is your game plan? Now... What do I mean by this? Okay, this is extremely important. All right, and oftentimes I'm going to get into this in, in one second. And explain what I mean. I've seen countless students that know the topic well. Good students, you know, they're reviewing their notes, uh, did well, you know, uh, did all the homework, did well on it. They know, you know, the they know the material, and they go into a test setting where they sit down to take an exam and they don't really have a game plan or they don't stick to their game plan and they can end up you know not doing uh as well as they know the material in other words their score doesn't re really reflect how well they know the material so i'm going to be speaking to you here in two different ways for me as a teacher if i'm looking at your work i want to see um, proof evidence that you comprehend the material okay so that's my job as a teacher looking at at your exam if you were taking a test in my class. However, your job is different, okay? I, I want you to think of yourself <clears throat> as a point warrior, a, like a Marine, that your job, your sole mission is to collect as many points on that test. Like that's your mission, okay? When you go into the, an exam, uh, as a student, you should be thinking points. Where can I get them? I need to collect them all up. And, and that's, your, that's your, got to be your main focus. Obviously, you need to know the material. But that's the mindset you should have. Now, again, me as a teacher, I want to see evidence. Uh, you know, my, I'm, my interest is, hey, do you know the, the material? Okay, I want to see evidence of that. You are on an exam, okay, whether you need to pass a test like the GED or uh, get a, the top SAT score, or whatever the case is, your concern is how do you get the best grade possible? How do you get uh, as many points possible? So let's get into this now, all right? So what do I mean by game plan? All right, this is where I see a lot of students uh, fall short. So first of all, you need to know generally, okay, right when you get that exam, and you may not know a lot of this information um, uh, before you start the test. So you're gonna have to assess this right off the bat when, you, when you're when you given your exam. So the first thing is time per question, okay? Like how much time are you gonna spend per question? So if there's one hour and there's 60 questions, are you going to spend one minute per question? Maybe, maybe not, okay? 
but you need to have a, a sense of time per question. I see this happen with a lot of students. They'll spend 10 minutes on one question out of 50, okay, because they're like, uh, they're just thinking, I have to get this one question right. They're not thinking in terms of how do I get as many points, okay? So when you're of the mindset of how do you get as many points, that's going to drive how much time you're going to spend per question. But that's not all of it, okay? Let's talk about something else you need to know. And that's how the test is going to be uh, graded, all right? So how is the test going to be graded? In other words, if you skip a question, is that going to, are you going to occur a, a, penal, a penalty, okay? If it's multiple choice and you, and you, you guess, you know, are you going to get um, uh, points taken away? Some tests, they'll actually take some points away. For example, like the SAT exam, if I'm not mistaken, this could be um, uh, different now, but I don't believe so. The SAT and ACT, if you select, well, um, let me just stick with the SAT. I think it's the SAT. Um, but there's a lot of tests like this where if you, let's say you have option A, B, C, D on a, on a, on multiple choice, and you just guess, and you guess for, um, you select C, and you're just guessing, and C is wrong, they'll take away a point. Okay, in other words, guessing is, you're, is going to be penalized, all right? Other tests, you um, guessing is not penalized. So if you have 60 questions, right, multiple choice, um, and um, uh, guessing is not penalized, in other words, a wrong answer is not going to go against you, what's the obvious thing you need to do? The obvious thing is you need to answer every single question, even if you guess on every single question. And I've seen this. And a lot of exams where students have that ability, let's say it's 50 questions, multiple choice, um, especially like on final exams, and uh, um, wrong answers do not go against you, and still students turn in papers, they're turning in exams, and there's 10 questions blank. I mean, that's crazy, right? I mean, so again, they didn't have a good game plan. They're, they're stuck, they're, their focus is, um, you know, on how do I get problem number three right? I know how to... Well, you know, I know how to do the quadratic equation. I, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, I'm definitely gonna prove to the math teacher I can get this answer right, and it gets stuck. Remember, when you get that math test, you need to shift your focus. This is my opinion, okay? And this is why I used to do a lot of tutoring for people taking SAT tests and you know, very difficult exams. And I would say this is the number one thing that gives students advantages. Um, taking test is your is how your strategy. Okay, I call it the game plan, whatever you want to think of it. But this is a uh, um, what I'm talking about, and this is a skill. You got to kind of practice this. Now, also, you may not know all of this uh, in advance of the test. But let's suppose you're. Um, in a, in a regular classroom setting, you should be asking your teacher if it, the teacher has not made uh, made it clear. Ask them. Like the worst that the teacher is going to do is not tell you. Be like, well, I can't, you know, give you that information. But for me, I always suggest. I always love those students to be like, hey, is this going to be on the test? Is that going to be on the test? Are you going to read the grade this way? And they would just like just try to get as much information out of me. And I and I, and I was like, that's smart. That's what you should be doing. Now I'm not necessarily going to give you. Um, all these hints or clues, you know, what you know on a test may or may may or may not. And quite frankly, I'll tell you, teachers are human. You may not believe that, but we're human. And uh, depending on what mood I'm in, or uh, what state of mind, or I might be absent-minded. Sometimes teachers inadvertently give more information about a test than they mean to. Okay. So you just never know. So what I'm, what am I saying? If you're in a classroom setting, you got a teacher, you should be asking, let them say no, no, well, I'm not going to tell you that this and that. And you should be asking all these things that are going to affect your game plan, your strategy. Um, is there multiple choice questions? You know, how are you going to grade it? Um, is this particular thing going to be on the test? Whatever. Okay, so let's talk about some other stuff here. So grading's uh, really big. Another thing is partial credit. Partial credit. So this would be like on open-ended uh, questions, right? So let's say, uh, let's see here, number one, number two, and number ten. Okay, so you you do number one, you do number two, da da da. You come down to number question ten, and you have no clue how to do that problem maybe like a tiny little bit of 
some semblance of like what's going on. So what do you do? Okay. Do you just leave it totally blank? Well, no, I don't think so. Uh, especially if you know your teacher gives partial credit and most teachers are going to give partial credit. Generally speaking, um, if it's an open-ended question, you're going to be turning it in. So what do you write down? Well, write down anything you can, <laughs> literally. I mean, I, I mean, this might sound kind of crazy. Just, and I'm not talking just nonsensical stuff. I mean, like try to write down a formula, try to start the problem, tr you know, mathematically speaking, write anything down. Because I'm telling you right now, teachers um, look for, um, they'll try to help you. Okay, for example, if the difference between um, you passing a class, in other words, between a D and a C for a final grade, and you're at a 69%, and you need to get to a 70% to get a C, all right, and you just need like one, point, one more point in order for the teacher to justify that, well, if you wrote something down, like on question 10 here, like partial credit, even if it was a tiny little bit of anything, and you generally, you know, were on a teacher's good side and all that kind of stuff, they'll just give you, I'm telling you, there'll be justification enough for them to give you a point, all right? Now, that's an extreme example of partial credit, but literally, it can it can mean all the difference, you know, I'm, just, I'm telling you kind of how most teachers kind of think, all right? They need, they need something from you to justify giving you like uh, a couple charity points, <laughs> if you will, right? But let's suppose you you actually know a lot about what's going on in question 10, but you're not 100% confident. Do as much as you can do in the time allotted. Again, you're going to have to think about your time per question, all right? So partial credit's a big thing. And if you know your teacher is going to be do it, don't leave questions blank. I guess basically that's another way to say this, okay? But, um, you know, don't spend an uh, inordinate amount of time just on one particular question if you don't really know what you're doing. But get something down. Don't leave anything blank, okay, for open-ended questions. Now, another thing I'm going to uh, suggest is double-check, all right? Double-check. Let's put it this way. Double check the problems um, you feel good about, right? Now, I've seen this over and over again as well. So let's say, oh, number one, you feel good about. Number two, you feel good about. Like, yep, I know how to do these problems. Ba 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 ba. I'm I'm, I'm whizzing through them. Uh, and here's what ends up happening. Let's say there's, you know, half the test questions you feel good about. You absolutely know. You aced it on the on the quiz, the homework, or whatever the case is. You really know it. Here's what ends up happening to a lot of students. They go too fast and they don't double check. They get sloppy with their work and then they end up getting those questions like partially wrong. Or if it's multiple choice, they get zero credit, all right, where they could have, if they just spent a little bit more time double checking, investing in those questions, they would have gotten all those points. So my, you know, real strong advice to you is, and you need to, again, have this in your game plan, be thinking about that as how much time per question. For those questions that you really, really know how to do, spend a little tiny bit of extra time to double check. Okay, if you know exactly what's going on, what the question's asking, the skill you're doing doing well, because believe me when I tell you, okay, teachers like to be creative in terms of questions and they like to kind of trick you, okay? They'll ask questions and they'll be like, okay, is this person paying attention to what I'm saying? And uh, math teachers, unfortunately, you know, they like to <laughs> they like to make things difficult on students. So sometimes you have a very direct kind of question, but oftentimes there's questions built in to that are, that are asked in a particular way to, to basically punish the student that is just whizzing through, not really just paying attention or focusing, okay? So don't be that person. If you know really what's going on in a question, stop and think and be like, okay, am I being tricked here? You need to have a little bit of paranoia. You got to be like, okay, well, what's going on? Maybe there's some sort of trick question, but just spend a little bit more extra time to secure that point because getting a full credit on the on these um, questions that you know is extremely important. You got to secure that. All right. So don't just go whizzing by to go. Don't go too fast, especially in those questions that you, you know, again, this is all part of your game plan strategy. And last but not least, and there's some other things in here, but I just want to give you some big ones is never, never, never do what? 
Never, never, never. Turn your test in. Turn your test in early. Oh, my goodness. I've seen this over and over and over again. Students be like, okay, look at I'm a superhero math. Watch me. I'm going to get up, and I'm going to turn my test in early, and everyone's going to notice, wow, look at that. I'm the smartest one in the class because I stood up early. I'm marching up to the teacher's desk, and I'm saying, here you go. Here's my test, and there's like 15 minutes left on the exam. Okay, This never, never generally for most students it doesn't work out well. <laughs> so don't do not do this, okay? Never turn your test in early. Never, ever, okay? Always use that extra time to go back and review or go back and see, hey, did I mess things up? And you, you got to be engaged with the exam all the way to when there's no more time, okay? Even if you get 100% right and you still got 30 minutes left. I'm not saying that there aren't students that, that you know, don't get the test done early and, um, you know, the ace the exam. But these students, okay, the ones that are really, really good, they know they're not, they're just not going to turn it in, okay? They all turn the test in early. They stop and they're like, okay, let me double check. Let me grade myself, all right? Me as a math teacher, somebody who does math professionally, and I do lots and lots of math problems, I know in advance before I do math problems that I have a, a there's a good probability I'm going to make an error you know, by just doing math. And that's the nature of mathematics because you're writing, you're... There's a lot going on. It's it's like any little tiny distraction can throw you off. So math is a game of focus. Okay, it's a it's a, it, you got to be highly focused, highly engaged, and you have to have good habits. So, and you know, people that are you know do very well in math um, double check themselves. They're always thinking, reflecting. Hey, what what did I you know write? Did I write things correctly? I mean, I've literally um, wrote things down mathematically. My mind said. Like 7x plus 1, my mind is saying 7x plus 1, okay? And I'm thinking, literally, uh, that's what I'm writing, and I might write 7x plus 11, okay? I mean, there's times where, I, I mean, it's just like, it happens to anyone, because just in that little crazy fraction microsecond, you can get distracted on something, and then you just, like, you know, you make an error, and you, we just, you know, move on. It's like... If you ever lost your cell phone or something like that in your, in your home, or your car keys is a better example, right? You're like, where's my car keys? Where's my cell phone? You're looking everywhere. You're like, you're going crazy. You're like, I can't believe it. I had them right here. They're right here in front of me. You look everywhere, you, and then you come back to the spot where you're beginning your search, and there's the car keys or the cell phone right in front of you, right? We can all relate to that because just you got a momentary lapse in focus. Sometimes, sometimes we just don't see things. So what am I getting at? If you have time to go double check, you, you go dub, double check your work. So never, ever, ever turn your test in early. But let's call it a wrap here on, um, on this uh, really critical advice. Again, I've seen the best students, the students with, you know, that just know the material are, are really good. If they are not engaged with a game plan on that test, that's the secret ingredient for them to really pull off a top-notch test score is to know about that, okay? And your teacher is not going to, well, depending on the teacher you have, some teachers are going to, you know, um, kind of maybe give you advice with this, but really this is an academic skill that you need to develop, okay? So, you know, I would, um, Hope that you may want to watch this video maybe again before an exam or if you got something that really important coming up because, uh, you know, for me, you know, I'm not teaching in a classroom setting anymore. So what I like to do is pass on uh, all of these strategies to those that are seeking this information. So if you're watching this video, you're pr probably interested in, hey, how do I do the best I can uh, on a math test? So... Uh, we'll wrap it up now. Again, I hope you, um, you know, gain value from uh, my videos. And, you know, uh, again, I'm posting things that I think of are of value all the time. So I hope you can become a subscriber. Make sure you hit that bell notification. 
If you enjoyed the video, I'd definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And again, if you're interested in uh, learning from me in a more formal, comprehensive, complete uh, way, I'll leave links in the description of this video of my uh, full uh, math courses. And then last but not least, leave me some feedback. I do get a lot of comments, which I definitely appreciate, but lets me know how I'm doing and also gives me ideas on future videos. But uh, with that being said, I definitely appreciate your time and have a great day.